a small town, and one of the great Canadian small towns is actually found here inside of Canada's largest city. Or I should say, just offshore. The Toronto Islands, home to about 600 year-round residents. And those islands are accessible all winter thanks to the ice-breaking acumen of the Toronto Fire Services. They say breaking ice is hard to do. This week, the Mercer Report aims to find out. And this is Deputy Chief Mike McCoy of Toronto Fire Services. Hello, Mike. How are you? Rick, very nice to meet you. Very nice to be here. This is very exciting. We're here. We're going to do some ice breaking, correct? Correct. Now, when people say the island and they're in Toronto, they're referring to this island out here where people live. It's actually a group of islands. Right. There's five of them all together. Right. And there's people out there. Yes. Hippies. Yeah. Well. And uh, they need to be, oh, they're hippies. They're kind of hippies. They used to be hippies. You sound like you know what you're talking about. There's people out there, and they need access to the city. Yes. Right? Yes. Because they got to come in and get their legumes. And so you need to keep the, 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 the path free of ice. Correct. They've got a nude beach over there. OK. Did you know that? Uh, I've come heard. I've heard. You knew that. I've seen you there. <laughs> I recognize the hat. <laughs> I try to keep the hat on all the time. Of course, it's because you don't want to get the sunspots. And this is Adrian Lewicki, boat captain. Hello, Adrian, how are you? How you doing, Rick? Good to see you. Thanks for inviting me aboard. You're welcome. I think if you were standing on shore and you were watching this beautiful vessel cut through the ice, you'd think, boy, it's peaceful out there. But it's not at all, is it? No, it's violent. It's uh... it's violent. We're we're bouncing, we're smashing because this ice. Now, how thick do you think this is? Today we're up to about 30, 40 centimeters, but we have broken up to 60. Now this is a path that has already been cut. How often do you have to re-cut this path? Uh, we will often in the winter, days like this, we'll go through at least twice a day. You're kidding, because in six or seven hours it'll freeze solid. It could refreeze, especially some days are much, much more often. Can we turn the volume down? I would like to, uh, permission to take the wheel, Captain. All right. All righty. Now, I've noticed you are driving. In the track. In the track. That's right. I like to go off the beaten track, Blake. You can try, but uh, it's pretty thick. I don't think it's going to let you. You can give it a try. Do you think we'll get stuck? No, nope, we won't get stuck. Can we back up and take a run at it? We might have to. Let's back her up and take a run at it. That's thick ice, it's isn't it? It's thick ice, yeah. OK, now we go forward. Yep. They call me Captain Crunch, and this is why. OK, here we go, here we go. Yes. It's like Star Trek up here. Start to go there. That's as far as we go. OK, yeah. we'll back it up and we'll go back on the path. All right. But I'm pleased to show that I have gone off the beaten path. There you go. Look at that. There we are. I was really hoping to write my initials in the snow, but I'll have to pee later. We're crushing it. Thank you, I'll be back. Just having a quick hello. Okay, and there's my ride back there, and I'm standing here on Ward's Island. This is my friend Allison Zosky, resident. Hello, Allison. Hello, Rick, nice to see you. Usually I come to visit you in the summer. This is my first time in the winter. And it's completely different, isn't it? It totally is, uh, but it, it really is. It's like a small town in essentially downtown Toronto. It's totally a small town, 10 minutes away from downtown. How long does it take you to get out of bed and get to work. Usually I can get to work in 20 minutes. That's phenomenal. We wouldn't be able to get off the island without the icebreaker getting through. You saw how, you probably saw how. I drove the icebreaker. Well, I've never been on the icebreaker. Oh, I drove the bloody thing today, I tell you. I tell you, the reason why the citizens of this fine island can exist safely today is is you, and we thank you, thank and we you. thank the ice boat people. That's why I'm here. OK, I can go now. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, Toronto Fire Services does so much more than just break ice in the harbour. They actually save lives. This is Ian Peters. Hello, Ian. How are you? Hi, Rick. How are you doing? Now, people like yourself, you are prepared to go in this water and rescue someone at a moment's yeah. notice. Yes. I would like to take part in that kind of exercise. OK. Well, you'd have to do a training program, but I think we can find something for you. OK. Now, there's a crack team of search and rescue people on deck. I'm part of them, but I notice I'm the one not wearing a helmet which leads me to believe I'm not really part of the team. 
I'm the victim, aren't I? You're the victim. I'm the victim. I'm chilly already in this thing. Don't worry, it's warmer in the water. Oh. Oh, my goodness. There we go. All right. So this is really happening, eh? Now we're getting near the area that the ice baker cleared a path. This narration is starting to sound like this is the last known videotape. Oh. Okay, so that just happened. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, boy. There's a hole in a really bad spot. Oh, yeah, that's the worst spot. Like, if someone had to pick a spot, that would be it. Oh, wow. Double time, double time. I may be hallucinating, but I think I'm about to be rescued by two men and a giant banana. Stay calm, try and keep your arms up on the ice, sir. Oh, a whole banana. Stay calm, we'll have you out of there oh, in a second. Oh, I see how it works. We're just gonna slip you in. Hi there. Two, one. Hey, I've seen this in the Caribbean, and now a boat is gonna pull us around, and we're gonna go, wee! You're watching the Mercy Report on